Hello everybody, today we're going to look at a circular motion problem that involves some tension. In this problem we are told that there's a ball of known mass, it happens to be 12 kilograms. This ball is attached to a 1.2 meter string, so that's 1.2 meters, and it's being spun around in a circle. So this is kind of a vertical line and if we were taking a little bit of a overhead view, so not fully overhead, but just kind of a little bit of an angle, we would see this ball being spun around in a circle like this. As this ball is spun faster and faster, you can picture that this string would start to get more and more horizontal with this ball. And as it would do that, the tension in this string would definitely increase. So tension would be going up here. The problem tells us that this particular string can only withstand 230 newtons of tension before it breaks. So what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the angle that this string would make before we would actually snap this line. And in fact, we want to know this sort of angle, so something against the horizontal. In addition to knowing the angle, we are also going to find the velocity, or in fact we say the speed here because it's a changing direction for the velocity vector. So we'll keep it to the magnitude part. We're trying to find the speed of the ball as it's going around in this circle. So let me get rid of this so that I can actually draw some diagrams that we're going to be using to solve the problem. My first diagram is going to be a force diagram and it's going to sit over here. I have a 12 kg ball there's an FG that operates down on this ball. And there's also a tension vector that heads up in this direction here. This particular drawing needs to be such that we are looking at it from the side so that I'm truly seeing that this is the horizontal right here. The FG is exactly down and that tension is heading uh, up into that first quadrant as I have it drawn. We would define this angle theta as being something that's interesting to us because that is going to give us the angle of the string relative to the horizontal. Let's go ahead and fill in some numbers here. And so FG is just the weight of the object, so that's equal to MG. And if I use the mass of 12 kilograms, and the g as negative 9.8 meters per second squared, I can pretty easily find that the weight is equal to negative 117.6 and that would be in newtons. I can also come up here and go ahead and assign the tension in this particular rope to be 230 newtons. So that's actually the maximum force that we can have within this rope before it breaks. But that's what the problem is interested in, so I'm going to go ahead and just use that value. That way this theta is relevant for that. So there's something about the forces, but what you have to do now is you have to come over and you have to define a different system or a different set of triangles that are going to be relevant for distance. So I still have the ball that's sitting here, and now I have a rope that's going up in this direction. It's 1.2 meters. The reason why this is important is because I can talk about the components of this particular tension there's an X component that is headed off this way, so FT comma X. There's also a component that heads up this way, FT comma Y. And they have to have the same units as the hypotenuse there, so that it has to be newtons. Well, there's another thing over here that is a hypotenuse, and it's this guy, the length of the rope in meters. That means I can talk about what is the horizontal distance this ball is from the center over here. And I'm going to give this the label of R. So that is actually the radius of the circle uh, if this was moving all the way around here. Then of course there would be some Y component to that as well and that's just not going to be quite as useful for me in this problem. But I need to be able to look at both of these particular triangles simultaneously to successfully solve this problem. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to identify that the only force I have that's really pulling things down is the FG of this ball and that has to entirely be countered by the only upward force in this system which is the Y component of tension. So through a logic argument I can say this has to be 117.6 newtons. I can say that because the acceleration is totally inward pointing. Remember we call that a centripetal acceleration when it is an inward pointing acceleration. 
Now that I know this vertical wall of the triangle and the hypotenuse here of this triangle, I can go ahead and define everything about this triangle. So in order to find the FT comma X component, what I'll do is I'll use the Pythagorean theorem. I'll say the hypotenuse 230 squared is equal to 117.6 squared plus FT comma X squared. And when you do that, you find that FT comma X is equal to 197.7 newtons. So I'll fill that in over here, 197.7 newtons. I can also pick my favorite trig function to find theta, and so I'll use the sine function. I can say sine of theta is equal to the opposite side, 117.6, divided by the hypotenuse is 230. If I use the inverse sine function in order to get at what theta is, I will find that theta is equal to 30.6 is where I'm going to round that, degrees. So now I have theta is equal to 30.6 degrees. Okay, since I have that diagram labeled up there now, I'm going to get rid of some of the work that got me there. What's really important about this is that you must have a similar triangle over here on the other side of things. Basically, the argument behind this is that the tension can only act in the direction of the rope. And so if the tension vector is right here, the hypotenuse over on the left side, well, this rope must have all the same parameters as far as its angle is concerned. So now looking at this, you see I have an angle and I have the hypotenuse. I can actually use the cosine function. Cosine of 30.6 degrees is equal to R, something I'm very interested in, divided by 1.2 meters. Solving this will tell me that R is equal to 1.03 meters. Now we actually have everything that we need in order to fully characterize the rest of this problem. And so in order to show you that, I'm going to say that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. So that's just a fundamental equation that we have here. Remember, centripetal just means inward pointing. And so if you look, this component over here is actually always inward pointing, no matter what's going on with this ball. That means that it is the centripetal force that is causing the centripetal acceleration of this ball. The centripetal acceleration is in this direction here. It is not in the direction of the rope, and that is really important. It has to be pointing directly in from the actual circle of motion. It doesn't really matter that the rope is actually coming up above that, and so it would be kind of like a cone as that rope spins around. It's that base, that circle, that's going to define the centripetal acceleration's plane. The more interesting variation of this equation for me is that Fc is equal to the mass times v squared over r, where v squared over r is just a replacement for the centripetal acceleration. Getting rid of some of this stuff for a moment, you can see that as long as I understand all these connections we've been making, I am ready to actually solve for v. Fc is this component that's over here. So now I come in and say Fc is 197.7 newtons. That is equal to the mass, 12 kg, its particular speed, is getting squared, divided by the r. And so again, I had to have this other distance triangle so that I could talk about the radius of this circle. But I have 1.03 meters underneath there. And if you successfully rearrange and solve for v from this, you will find that the v is equal to 4.12, and that would be in meters per second. So going back to the original problem statement, it says, what is the angle relative to the horizontal? It's right here. It's 30.6 degrees. What is the speed of the ball? It is 4.12 meters per second. If anyone were to start spinning this thing even faster than that, this angle over here would have to get smaller. The rope would get more horizontal, but it would have to experience more tension in the process, and it would snap. So we've actually found the information that we were asked to find in this problem. 
Hopefully that all made sense to you, and if it did, you should let your computer know.